50 ways that English learners can use ChatGPT to improve their English. ChatGPT is a wonderful tool that we can use for a variety of purposes. You as an English learner can use it to improve and practice your English. I will show you 50 ways that you can use ChatGPT to do that. First, install a plugin called Talk to ChatGPT. Once you install it, it takes your audio and puts it into text and ChatGPT's answers from text to audio so that you can have a conversation with ChatGPT. Google Talk to ChatGPT. Install the plugin. Then go to ChatGPT. In the corner, you will see Talk to ChatGPT. This is where you mute yourself, where you can mute the audio or you can skip. You can change some of the settings like the voice. You can change this talking speed and the speech recognition. I am an English learner. Can we have a conversation in a restaurant and you are the waiter? Of course. Let's have a conversation in a restaurant. I'll play the role of the waiter. Can I have the menu, please? Of course. Here's our menu. Would you like a few minutes to look it over? Or do you know what you'd like to order? What do you have to drink? We have a variety of drinks available, including soft drinks, iced tea. We also have coffee and tea. How much for the coffee? Our coffee is $3 per cup, and we offer free refills on coffee. Yes, I'd like a coffee, please. Certainly. Would you like cream and sugar with your coffee? Or would you prefer it black? Sugar, please. Great. One coffee with sugar coming right up. You can also practice specific grammar points. I am an English learner. Can you give me a question on the present perfect tense? Certainly. Here's a question you could use to practice the present perfect tense. Have you ever traveled to another country? And if so, where have you been? I have traveled to Japan. That's great. What was your favorite thing about your trip to Japan? I really liked the food. Japanese cuisine is certainly something special. Curriculum. As an English learner, you should know what to study. You need a guide or plan. Ask ChatGPT to provide you with a plan to study with. I am an English learner studying for IELTS. Can you give me a two week studying plan for basic English? Day one, review basic grammar and verb tenses. Focus on vocabulary. Practice listening comprehension. Practice reading comprehension. Practice speaking by recording yourself. We can take a break and review. Week two, practice writing longer sentences and paragraphs. Review verb tenses. Practice listening comprehension, practice reading comprehension and summarize, practice speaking by having conversations, we can take a break and review. Review grammar and vocabulary, identify areas where you need improvement, practice writing a short essay, practice a listening comprehension, practice reading. By following this two week studying plan, you will have covered the basic skills necessary for the IELTS exam. Remember to practice consistently and identify areas where you need improvement. Good luck. ChatGPT can give you a basic level test that you can practice to see how good your English is. I am an English learner. Can you give me a basic English level test i to the beach yesterday i went identify the correct word or verb to be she is a doctor i went to the store to buy some bread she is eating an apple the cat is on the couch and then section two vocabulary choose the synonym what is synonym it means the same as happy maybe joyful choose the correct definition for the word fastidious I would say meticulous. Choose the antonym for the word big. Antonym, the opposite. So big, small. Choose the correct definition for the word ubiquitous. Commonplace. Mary is a teacher. She loves her job because she enjoys working with children. She teaches math and science at the local elementary school. Her students like her because she is patient and kind. Mary is also a good listener. She often stays after school to help students who are struggling with their studies. What is Mary's profession? She is a teacher. Why does Mary enjoy her job? She enjoys working with children. What subject does Mary teach? Let's see. It is math and science. Why do Mary's students like her? Because she is patient and kind. What does Mary do after school to help her students? She stays after school. And then it also gives us the answers to check how well we did. Dialogues. 
you can ask ChatGPT to give you dialogues to practice with a friend. I am an English learner. Can you give me a dialogue to do with a friend about last weekend? Hi, how was your weekend? It was pretty good, thanks. On Saturday, I went to the park with my family. We had a picnic and played some games. That sounds fun. Did you play do did you do anything else? Yeah, on Sunday I met up with some friends and we went to see a movie. It was really good. We all enjoyed it. Which movie did you see? We saw Avengers Endgame. Have you seen it? No, I haven't had the chance to see it yet. How was it? It was amazing. There were so many cool action scenes and the story was really engaging. You should definitely check it out if you get the chance. I will. Thanks for the recommendation. Anything else interesting happen over the weekend? Not really, just some relaxing downtime at home. Overall, it was a pretty nice weekend. How about yours? Practicing grammar. You can ask ChatGPT to ask you questions based on specific grammar. Can you give me a question based on the past perfect tense? Have you traveled to Europe before your trip last summer? No, I haven't. Since I actually responded with the present perfect tense, it gives us some tips on how to use the past perfect tense. So it, it's helping us learn English. By the time you took your trip to Europe last summer, had you already saved enough money for the trip? And now I can use the correct, yes, I had. That's great to hear. Using the past perfect tense is a great way to show that an action was completed before another past action or time. Is there anything else you would like to know or practice? You can practice all the grammar you are struggling with, with ChatGPT. You can also ask ChatGPT to explain different grammar to you. Can you explain the present perfect tense in a basic way? The present perfect tense is used to talk about actions or events that started in the past but are still relevant or have a connection to the present moment. It is formed with the auxiliary verb have or has, depending on the subject, plus the past participle of the main verb. For example, I have eaten breakfast means that I ate breakfast at some point in the past, but the action is still relevant to the present moment. It could be that I'm still feeling full from breakfast or that I'm telling someone why I'm not hungry right now. Similarly, she has worked at the company for five years means that she started working at the company five years ago and is still working there now. The present perfect tense is often used with time expressions like just already, yet, and never to indicate when an action happened or to show whether it has been completed or not. You can also learn more vocabulary. Can you give me 10 advanced vocabulary words to use for my IELTS test with definitions and examples. Here are 10 advanced vocabulary words with definitions and examples that you can use in your IELTS test. Ubiquitous, adjective, present or found everywhere. Example, mobile phones have become ubiquitous in our society, as everyone seems to have one. Conundrum, noun, a difficult problem or dilemma. Example, the government faces a conundrum on how to balance economic growth with environmental protection. Ask ChatGPT to create a closed test. A closed test is where it blanks out some of the words and you have to put it in the correct order. Create a close test with the previous vocabulary. So here's the close test with advanced vocabulary and here are all the answers. So you can check where they fit in. Ask ChatGPT to write stories for you to practice your English. Write a story on the past tense for an A2 ESR learner about going to the park. When I was younger, I loved going to the park with my family. One day we all woke up early and packed a picnic basket with sandwiches, fruits and drinks. Then we hopped in the car and drove to the park. When we got there, I ran to the swings and my brother went straight to the slide. My parents spread out a blanket on the grass and started setting up the picnic. We all played together for a while, but eventually my brother and I got hungry and we went to our parents for lunch. After we ate, we played some more games. My dad and I kicked a soccer ball around while my mom and brother played frisbee. It was so much fun. Now, using the story, we can ask ChatGPT to ask us some questions about it. Ask me five comprehension questions about the story. What did the family pack in their picnic basket? Where did the protagonist go first when they arrived at the park? The protagonist is the main character in the story. What did the protagonist and their dad do after lunch? What did the family see when they went for a walk around the park? Why did the family have to leave the park? Because it was getting late. You can also ask ChatGPT to ask you grammar questions. Give me five grammar questions 
about the story. What tense is used, the past tense, what verb tense is used to describe past tense for that happened at a specific time. What is the subject of the tense? We all play together for a while. What is the object? We saw some ducks swimming in the pond. What type of conjugation is used to join the two clauses in the sentence? My mom and my brother played frisbee. If you are studying for a test, ChatGPT can give you some questions to practice. If you have to study about prepositions, you can say, please give me five questions about prepositions. It's unnecessary to say please, but it's a good thing to learn. So you don't have to ask ChatGPT politely, but we are reminded that we should be polite even if we're chatting to an AI. What is the difference between in and on when talking about time? What is the preposition in the sentence, I went to the store with my mom? What preposition is used to indicate a location next to something? Can you ask me five questions with the present continuous tense? What are you doing right now? Right now I'm recording a video. Why are you always wearing headphones these days? Because it's so loud out. Who is your roommate texting at this hour? They are texting their girlfriend. How long have you been studying English? I've been studying English for two years. Where are you going for vacation this year? I am going to Peru. If you don't know how to answer a question, ask ChatGPT to give you an appropriate answer to use. How can I answer the question, what were you doing last week in English? Here are some answers to the questions, what were you doing last week? I was studying for my exams last week. I was working on a project for my job last week. I was traveling for work last week. I was spending time with my family last week. I was trying out some new recipes in the kitchen last week. But you can also answer and ask ChatGPT to improve whatever answer you give. I am going home because I feel bad. Please improve this sentence. I'm going home because I feel bad is grammatically correct, but it could be improved in a few ways. Here are three possible revisions. I'm heading home because I'm not feeling well. This revision uses a contraction to make the sentence sound more conversational and replaces bad with not feeling well, which is more precise and commonly used phrase to, to describe feeling ill. I'm leaving early because I am experiencing discomfort. This revision changes going home to leaving early, which is a more neutral way of expressing the same idea. It also replaces feel bad with experiencing discomfort, which sounds more formal and less colloquial. Colloquial means that it's more common. I'm returning home due to feeling unwell. This revision changes going home to returning home, which is a more formal way of expressing the same idea. It also replaces bad with unwell, which is a more elevated word choice. Elevated just means that it's better. Give fun language activities you can use to practice English. Give me a fun challenge to practice English. Write a short story of no more than 100 words that includes the following five words. Banana, umbrella, detective, library, and dance. So you have to use these five words to write a short story. Ask it to teach you specific skills. Give me a fun challenge to practice my English speaking. Choose a random object in the room you're currently in and give a one minute impromptu speech about it. Try to use as many descriptive words and details as possible. For an extra challenge, you can also try to use some specific grammar structures and vocabulary words that you've been working on. It can give you this fun challenge, but if you're unsure how to do it, ask it for an example. Can you give me an example. Of course, here's an example of an impromptu speech, impromptu meaning you didn't prepare for it, uh, about a random object. I'm looking at a red coffee mug on my desk. It is made of ceramic and has a glossy finish that catches the light in a really beautiful way. If you wanted to explain some of its answers that you don't understand, ask it to explain itself. What are the descriptive words from your answer? Red, ceramic, glossy, Beautiful, simple, black, smooth, comfortable, perfect, morning, overwhelming, colorful, and personal. Ask ChatGPT to explain some vocabulary to you that you don't know. Can you explain the word overwhelming? It's an adjective that describes something that is too much to handle or manage. It means that a particular thing is great in size, intensity, 
or number that it can be difficult or impossible to deal with effectively. For example, in my impromptu speech about the coffee mug, I mentioned that the mug was the perfect size for my morning cup of coffee and that it holds just enough to get me going without overwhelming me. In this context, overwhelming means that if the mug were too big or too full, it would be too much coffee for me to drink comfortably and it might make, make me feel sick or jittery, shaky, jittery. Overall, overwhelming is a word that conveys a sense of being inundated or overpowered, defeated by something that is too much to handle. Use ChatGPT to focus on your career, to learn for something you need for your job. If you are in marketing, you can say, teach me in a simple way what I need to know about marketing as an English learner. So here are some basic concepts, ideas and vocabulary words related to marketing that can be helpful for English learners. You can put in anything that has to do with your career, whatever you are working on. Marketing is the process of promoting or selling products or services to customers. One aspect of marketing is understanding the needs and preferences of your target audience. Also, if you go to a job interview, you can ask ChatGPT to give you questions to prepare. I am going to an interview to become a marketer. Can you give me simple English questions to practice? Can you tell us about your previous experience working in marketing? How would you go about conducting market research for a new product? How do you stay up to date with current marketing trends and best practices? Can you walk us through a successful marketing campaign you have worked on in the past? How do you measure the success of a marketing campaign? If you don't know how to answer it, you can ask ChatGP to give you an appropriate answer or a sample answer that you can use. Can you give me an appropriate answer for number three? What's amazing about ChatGPT is that it has a memory function where it remembers a certain amount of answers that it gave you and it can use it for future answers. Here's an example of an appropriate answer for question three. Staying up to date with current marketing trends and best practices is essential for any marketer and I make it a priority to stay informed about new developments in the industry. One way I do this is by regularly reading industry publications and blogs. You can also focus on trends. What new phrases are there that you should know about in different areas of your life? What new or current English phrases should I know about business English? Disruptive innovation refers to a new product or service that disrupts an existing market. Pivot to change direction or strategy. Low hanging fruit, the easiest opportunities to take. Growth hacking, using creative and unconventional techniques to rapidly grow business. Synergy, the interaction of two or more elements that produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. So together they, they do better. Think outside the box, a value proposition, a statement that clearly and concisely communicates the uh, unique value of a product or service that it provides to its customers, a paradigm shift, optimize core competence. You can use these phrases in your everyday English or when you go for an interview. Remember that new phrases and buzzwords emerge all the time, so it's always a good idea to stay up to date with industry-specific terminology and jargon. Which brings us to jargon or slang words. You can learn some common slang that young people use. Lit. This term means that something is exciting or cool. The party was lit. Flex. This slang term is used to show off or boast about one's achievement or possessions or talents. For example, he's always flexing with these new sneakers. I love that they give example sentences for you to use. FOMO, the fear of missing out. It refers to the feeling of anxiety or unease that you experience when you think about missing out on fun or an interesting experience. Ghosting, this means to stop responding to someone's messages or calls, usually without explanation or warning. It's often used in the context of dating, but can apply to other types of relationships as well. So you ghost someone, you stop texting them. Bay, the slang term is an acronym for before anyone else. It's used as a term of endearment for a partner or crush. For example, my bae and I are going to the movies tonight. It's worth noting that slang words and expressions can vary depending on the region, social group or context. Therefore, it's important to keep in mind that not all young people will use these specific terms and that new slang words are constantly emerging. It gives you fantastic tips 
about learning English. Use ChatGPT to learn phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are often difficult for English learners to master. So ask ChatGPT to give you some common phrasal verbs and use it in a sentence. Give me five common phrasal verbs with examples. Bring up to raise a topic or issue. For example, I don't want to bring up the subject of money, but we really need to talk about it. Get over, to recover from an illness, loss, or emotional distress. It took me a long time to get over my breakup with my ex-boyfriend. Look forward to, to anticipate or feel excited about something that's going to happen. I'm really looking forward to my vacation next month. Put off, to delay something until a later time. I keep putting off cleaning my room, but I know I need to do it soon. Take off, to leave or depart quickly, or to become successful or popular. I'm going to take off early from work today to catch my flight. The new restaurant has really taken off in the past few months. To remember phrasal verbs or vocabulary better, use it in a story. As humans, we remember stories better than if we have to memorize something. Use the, use the phrasal verbs in a short story. Sophie was feeling nervous about her upcoming job interview. She tried to bring up the topic with her friend Sarah, but Sarah kept changing the subject. Sophie knew that Sarah was uncomfortable talking about job interviews, so she decided to drop it. Instead, Sophie focused on getting over her nerves. She took a few deep breaths and reminded herself of all her qualifications and experience. She looked forward to the interview, knowing that it was a great opportunity for her. The day of the interview arrived, but Sophie put off leaving her apartment for as long as possible. She double checked her resume and outfit and even rearranged her living room furniture to, to distract herself from her nerves. Finally, Sophie took off for the interview, arriving early to calm her nerves and review her notes. The interview went well and Sophie felt confident and excited about the job. A few days later, she received a call offering her the position. The news was a huge relief and Sophie knew that her hard work had paid off. How amazing is AI to give you a story just like that? ChatGPT can also give you questions on a topic. You can ask it to give you comprehension questions and check the answers. You can also ask the questions in a table format. Give table format questions about the phrasal verbs. Bring up to raise the topic for issue or discussion. Can you bring up, get over, Look forward to put off and take off. Play Mad Libs with ChatGPT. It will ask you for some words you provide it, and it will create a story for you using those words. I walked into the restaurant and was immediately struck by the big bustling atmosphere. The smell of fresh hot pizza wafted through the air, making my mouth water. Play a game of continuing the story to practice your English. Let's play a game of creating a story sentence by sentence. Let's make it about playing golf. You start. Here's the first sentence. The sun was shining brightly as I stepped onto the green, feeling the weight of my putter in my hand. So it's in the past tense, so continue in the past tense. Rain clouds were fast approaching. Very lazy, I know. I should give a longer sentence. I knew I had to make my putt quickly before the rain started pouring down. I prepared to take my shot when an alligator appeared in front of me. I froze in fear, unsure of what to do next. It looked hungry, approaching me cautiously. My heart was racing as I backed away slowly, trying not to make any sudden movements. The alligator changed into a genie. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief, wondering if I was imagining things. It spoke in a loud voice, offering me three wishes. I couldn't believe my luck and quickly thought about what I wanted most in the world. World. An ice cold Coca Cola. The genie snapped his fingers and, to my surprise, a can of ice cold Coca Cola appeared in my hand. How great is this to become more creative? Use ChatGPT to check idioms and their meanings. There are thousands of idioms out there, and we can learn it using ChatGPT. Give me five idioms based on the color red. Caught red handed. This idiom means to be caught in the act of doing something wrong or illegal. Seeing red to be very angry. Paint the town red uh, to go out and have a wild time. Red letter day, a special or important day. The term red letter dates back to medieval times when important days were written in red ink to signify their significance. Red tape, excessive bureaucratic 
regulations and paperwork. Create flashcards to study using ChatGPT. Make five flashcards for business English. Profit, the financial gain. Grammar, used to talk about actions in the past. Idiom is think outside the box. Email etiquette. And for culture, you can say business etiquette, the set of norms and customs that you can use. Literature, learn about books. There are many books out there to practice English with. So you can ask for a summary. Give me a short summary of Animal Farm. It was written by George Orwell in 1945, set on a farm where animals overthrow their human omer and establish their own society based on the principle of animalism. Or you can ask ChatGPT to provide you with a list of important books that every ESL learner should know. Give me five books that every English learner should read. To Kill a Mockingbird, very important, by Harper Lee. And it gives us a short summary of what the book is about. Animal Farm, I just actually mentioned it. The Great Gatsby, there's a movie out and you can watch the movie, but I think it's better to read the book to learn English better. Pride and Prejudice, one of my favorites, also a movie out, but I would recommend watching the old BBC series. It's six episodes, quite long, but it's fantastic. Catcher in the Rye, one of the most popular American novels. This coming of age novel is a great choice for English learners who are interested in modern American literature. The language is informal and conversational, and the story deals with the themes of identity, adolescence, and disillusionment. Rhymes. Ask ChatGPT to write a poem that rhymes for you to practice. Can you write a rhyme for me to practice with the word shoe? <laughs> here's a rhyme with the word shoe. I just thought of it on the spot. Sure, here's a rhyme for you to practice the word shoe. Oh, have you seen my little shoe? It's gone missing. What shall I do? I've looked high, I've looked low, but I still can't find where did it go? Maybe it's hiding under the bed, or perhaps it's fallen off my sled. I hope I find it soon, you see, for without my shoe, I can't go free. So if you come across my shoe, please let me know, won't you do? I'll be so grateful, happy and glad to have my shoe. Oh, it makes me feel rad. Simplify language. If you have a difficult story, you can ask ChatGPT to tell it in a simple way so that it's more understandable. Just say simplify the following story. Copy and paste it in there and see what ChatGPT says. He got in the car, adjusted the seat and drove towards Gemma's house in Frampton. She had been insisting he'd buy a car for a while now. Okay, so it explains it in a simple way. You can also rewrite a story in a different way. For example, it can be more professional, so you can change the tone. Rewrite the following message in a more professional way. I need you to stop stealing my newspaper, otherwise I will call the police. Kindly refrain from taking my newspaper without my permission. Otherwise, I will be forced to involve the authorities. Thank you for your cooperation. ChatGPT can also explain something to you. For example, explaining an email in a simpler way so that you understand. Explain the following email in a simple way. Copy and paste. It's a long email and then ChatGPT explains it in a simple way that we can understand. It's almost like a summary, but it also explains the intention behind the email. Ask ChatGPT to list the difficult words with their definitions. From the previous answer, give a list of five difficult words and their definitions. Clarify, to make a statement or situation less confusing. Post installation, to activities or service provided after the installation of a product or service. Labor, work done by people to produce goods or services. ChatGPT also has the function to translate something for you. Translate the following into Spanish. After you do something and you still don't understand, just ask ChatGPT to translate it into your native language. ChatGPT can give you some feedback on how to improve an answer or show you the mistakes you have made. Give me feedback on the following sentence. I enjoy eat fruit, especially mango and apple. The sentence has a minor error in it. Instead of saying enjoy eat, it should be enjoy eating to make it grammatically correct. So the correct sentence would be, I enjoy eating fruit, especially mango and apple. Other than that, the sentence is fine. Uh, I would go a step further and saying, I enjoy eating fruit, especially mangoes and apples because we eat many of them, right? Most English classes are based around friendly topics. Ask for problems or arguments and how to explain yourself better. 
because we use English in a variety of situations. So you can ask ChatGPT to help you with that. I am an English learner. Give me an example argument I may have with my friend. You and your friend are trying to decide where to eat dinner. Your friend suggests a restaurant you don't really like, but they insist it's a great place. The conversation might go something like this. Let's go to an Italian restaurant downtown. I've heard it's amazing. I don't really like Italian food that much. And I've been there before. It's not that great. What are you talking about? It's one of the best restaurants in the city. Well, that's just your opinion. I don't think it's that good. But can't we just keep going to the same places all but we can't keep going to the same places all the time. We should try something new. I'm not saying we have to go to the same places, but there are plenty of other restaurants we could try. What about that Thai place we went last month? That was really good. Uh, I don't feel like having Thai food tonight. Can't we just go to the Italian place? I don't want to go there. How about we compromise and try the new sushi place instead? Sushi, I don't know, I'm not really in the mood for raw fish. Okay, well, let's keep thinking. There has to be a place we both want to go. Test your pronunciation. So, uh, speak a word into ChatGPT using Talk to ChatGPT, and it will test whether your pronunciation is good enough. Test my pronunciation. I want to go to New York for vacation. As a language model, I can't physically hear your pronunciation, but I can provide you with guidance on how to pronounce the sentence correctly. I is pronounced as I, want is want, to is to, go is go, New York is pronounced as New York, for, for, vacation, vacation. Putting it all together, the sentence is pronounced as I want to go to New York for vacation. Ask ChatGPT to write some sentences or tongue twisters that you can use to practice with. Give me a tongue twister I can use to practice pronouncing the letter R. Red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. Try saying it as quickly as you can without stumbling over the words or getting tongue tied. Give me a tongue twister to practice my English. Here is a classic tongue twister. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It plays on the alliteration or the repeat of the W sound and includes some tricky consonant clusters like CH and CK. It can be a challenge to say it quickly and accurately, but with practice, you'll be able to master it and improve your English pronunciation. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? If you don't know how to pronounce something, you can ask ChatGPT to write it in phonetics. Write the following sentence in phonetics. I am a big cautious bear. Sure, here's how you can write I'm a big cautious bear in phonetics using the international phonetic alphabet. I am a big cautious bear. The symbols in IPA represent different sounds in English. If you're not familiar with IPA, it might be helpful to learn more about it to improve your pronunciation. You can also ask it to give you the phonetic alphabet. P as in pen, B as in boy, T as in top, D as in dog, K as in kite, G as in goat, F as in fish, V as in voice, think, this, sit, zip, she, pleasure, hot, man, no, sing, love, red, yes, we. These examples are just approximations and may vary depending on your dialect. Writing exercises. Ask ChatGPT to give you some writing exercises you can try and to check your writing after. Give me a short writing exercise to practice my English writing. Imagine you just had the best day of your life. Write a short paragraph describing what happened, how you felt, and why it was so special. Remember to focus on using proper grammar, spelling, and punctuation. You can also try to use new vocabulary words you've learn to make writing more interesting and engaging. Don't worry too much about making it perfect. The goal is to practice expressing yourself in English through writing. Have fun with it. Write a short story and then you ask ChatGPT to give you feedback. Common English mistakes. There are some common mistakes students often make. Ask ChatGPT to give you some common English mistakes and how to avoid them. Give me five common mistakes English learners make. Confusing words with similar spellings and meanings, as in there, there, and there. Incorrect word order. In English, we usually say I am hungry instead of hungry am I. Misusing verb tenses. 
English has many verb tenses. It can be difficult to know which one to use in a given situation. Common mistakes include using the wrong tense, such as the present tense instead of the past tense, or using the past tense instead of the present perfect tense. Overusing direct translations. When learning a new language, it's common to rely on direct translations from your native language. However, English has many idioms and expressions that don't translate directly. For example, raining cats and dogs means raining heavily, not that it's raining cats and dogs. How can I practice and avoid number two? Study English sentence structure, pay attention to word order in spoken English, read a lot, practice writing and get feedback from a teacher or a native speaker to correct your sentences and give you feedback. Remember, it takes time and practice to become proficient in English. Don't be discouraged if you make mistakes. Just keep practicing and learning. Thank you, ChatGPT. So inspirational. I out bands. Ask ChatGPT vocabulary and tips for improving your IELTS score. How can I improve my IELTS score to band seven? Here are some tips. Understand the test format, practice regularly, build your vocabulary, improve your grammar, develop your writing skills. What grammar is important to learn for IELTS. There are several key grammar areas that are important to learn for the IELTS test. Verb tenses. You should be able to use different verb tenses correctly, including the present simple, present continuous, past simple, past continuous, present perfect, and future tenses. Articles. You should be able to use articles, a, and the, correctly, including when to omit them and when to use them in singular and plural nouns. Subject verb agreement. You should be able to use correct subject verb agreement. Ask ChatGPT to give you some prompts about what to talk about or what to write about. Give me four speaking prompts to practice for my IELTS test. Sure, here are four speaking prompts. Describe a memorable event in your life. Why was it significant to you? Talk about your favorite hobby. Describe a place you have visited that made a strong impression. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of living in a big city versus a small or rural area. Which do you prefer and why? And if you don't know how to exactly answer it, ask ChatGPT to give you an example answer. Give an example answer for number four. Several advantages, access to better career opportunities, uh, many cultures, finance, technology, and media. On the other hand, living in a small town has its own advantages. Smaller towns are more peaceful, they have a greater sense of community and a slower pace of life. Additionally, the cost of living, I'm guessing. Additionally, the cost of living can be lower, making it more affordable to buy a house. Personally, I prefer living in a big city because I enjoy the fast-paced lifestyle. Find language resources. Where can you practice online? What websites can I practice English? Duolingo, Bisu, BBC Learning English, English Central, you can go to these places and practice your English. Fluent You, Lingoda, Cambridge English Online. What movies or TV shows should I watch to improve my English? Friends, that's a classic. The Office, the American version. Breaking Bad, Sherlock, The Crown, and Big Bang Theory. All good ideas. Homonyms are commonly mistaken words. You find homophones where the sound is similar but the meaning is different. You find homographs where the writing is the same but the pronunciation is different or homonyms where they have the same spelling and pronunciation but the meaning is different. Give me five common homonyms. Bear, a large furry animal or to tolerate or carry something. For example, the bear in the woods is brown. I can't bear to watch that scary movie. Bank, a financial institution or the side of a river or body of water. I need to go to the bank. The fish swim in the river bank. Bat, a flying mammal or sports equipment. The bat flew through the night sky. I need a new baseball bat for the game. Match, a small stick for lighting a fire. A competition between two teams or individuals. Scale, a tool to use to measure weight or thin overlapping plates of fish on a reptile. I need to weigh myself on the bathroom scale. The snake scales are shiny and colorful. Ask ChatGPT to give you a better version of a sentence or words by providing good synonyms. I eat my breakfast quickly. Give me a better sentence to use. I devour my breakfast in haste. Explain the difference between difficult and tough. The words difficult and tough are often used interchangeably to describe something that is challenging or hard to do, but they have slightly different connotations. Difficult is something that requires a lot of effort or skill to accomplish. Tough, on the other hand, refers to something that is physically or emotionally demanding. The word hastily is an adverb that means to do something quick or in a hurried ma manner. It suggests that action is done without taking the time to be careful or thorough. You might say, I hastily packed my bags before leaving to the airport. You can use ChatGPT 
or you can also use Bing as an alternative. So for example, go into Bing. I searched what are some current news topics to talk about in a conversation as an English learner. There are many current news topics you can talk about in a conversation as an English learner. Here are some examples. The latest nuclear fusion experiment from South Korea. So these are current news topics that you can use. Controversy in Disney's live action of The Little Mermaid. New topics in legal curriculum in India. Because Bing is connected to the internet, you can use it to help you. What are some new movies for English learners in 2023. So it gives you some movies and it also gives a short summary of the movie. Barbie, Shazam, Are You There God, It's Me, Margaret, Rye Lane, a romantic comedy movie about two young people who connect over the course of an eventful night in London. You can learn some British English words and accents as well as some cultural references and slang. And it also gives you the websites where it found the information. These are 50 ways you can use ChatGPT. I hope it helps you improve your English hastily.